our Summer Games Fest 2024 with Amazon Games. I'm here with the team behind Throne and Liberty. Open beta test July 18th through the 23rd and full launch in the U.S. September 17th on PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series XS. Gentlemen, introduce yourself for the audiences at home. Sure. My name is Daniel LaFuente. I'm the Globalization Design Manager here at AGS for Throne and Liberty. And I'm Mervly Kwai. I'm the head of third-party publishing. One of the things that I like about you know, that really stands out for me when it comes to Throne Liberty is the is the morph system. Like the seamless morph going from glide morphs to water morphs all at the top of a hat without any delay or cooldown. How is it kind of like seeing that and incorporating that into this, into this gameplay? Yeah, that was actually one of the big decisions that uh, NCSoft made early uh, in their development cycle was do we go with a more traditional mount system or do we bring morphs into play? And they landed on morphs because they wanted players to feel like they were the main the main character throughout the entire experience. And so morphs give you the ability to transform into the animal yourself. And it also uh, went in line with one of our key principles is this kind of seamless feeling in the world. You may have noticed during the demo, there's not any load screens. In the open world, there's no load screens. And morphs is just a continuation of that, where the moment you press the morph, board and you, morph button, you're instantly transformed. Uh, and so that's why those decisions were made. With that kind of seamlessness, how was it like seeing it go cross-platform? Awesome. I mean, uh, we can't tell you how impressed we are really with the underlying tech. I mean, Throne and Liberty is built with this sort of massive combat in mind. Thousands of players participating inside of a castle siege, hundreds of players in other areas, other types of events. Uh, and it works seamlessly, not just on PC, but on console, which is so impressive on PS5 and on Xbox. Thousands of players and really, really great experience, smooth frames, and so it's really impressive. The other thing is just the sheer level of customization, not just like with creating characters, but choosing loadouts, choosing equipment. Like how is it just seeing the full breadth of options that are available to characters, especially at launch? Yeah, um, Throne in Liberty actually, we don't have classes, we have a dual weapon system, and so those weapons determine which type of skills you have available to you. Um, and so that's the first part of kind of customization that you're going to choose, one of your main choices. Uh, but it also gives you flexibility to go between all of these different play styles. And so we're expecting that when we get a large global audience, we're going to see a vast breadth of different play styles that people are choosing with these different combinations. And it goes beyond that, as you said, all of the gear, uh, how you adapt your skills, you know, your weapon mastery is something that's in the game that players are going to enjoy. Each one of these choices takes you potentially down a, a different play style. Uh, and you can adapt those play styles for different situations. You know, if you're in a castle siege, you may go heavy into AOE. If you're in a smaller battle, you may focus on single target damage. And players have that flexibility because they're not locked into a class. And so we're really excited about that. Let's talk about that global audience because, I mean, you know, Throne and Liberty had launched in South Korea in December of 2023. How is it kind of like seeing it kind of be localized to all these different markets and kind of for this huge ambitious launch later this year? Yeah, well, since we partnered with NC, since we signed with them, we have always had a shared goal that this is a global game. And so what you're going to see is not uh, a bunch of changes for a Korean version of the game and then a separate changes for a global version of the game. We're really working together for a global, uh, for a global audience, for a global target. And so that's been at the forefront of what we've been doing. We've had previous tests, a technical test, a closed beta test, and the feedback and output that we've gotten from that has directly translated to changes that have already been put live in the Korean version. And that gives us even more testing grounds to validate were those the right changes, et cetera. And so it's really been this great back and forth cycle of getting global feedback, being able to really put it live with players. It's, it's really been received well in Korea as well. And so we have this, you know, uh, you know, great synergy, let's say. Let's talk about some of the dungeons, because what I love about the dungeon that we just played is it really employs everything that makes, you know, Throne and Liberty so much fun and so unique. Like, how is it, like, kind of building the dungeon crawler in PvE environments and kind of, like, having them challenge and test the, you know, players and kind of see the full breadth of the game or experience it themselves as they play? Yeah, well, you know, Throne and Liberty was, uh, is at its core a PvP game. And so as we've built more PvE elements, we've been really happy by the reception that we've gotten from the player base. The instance dungeons that you mentioned in particular have been getting called out in our most recent playtest as a really great experience for players. And I think that's because there's a lot of unique factors that can come into those dungeons. Um, 
for Throne and Liberty. We talked about the morphing system earlier. You may have noticed in this dungeon, the boss fight required you to use that morphing system for some of the mechanics. Uh, in the open world in Throne and Liberty, there's lots of environmental changes. Um, and those same types of mechanics are built into these dungeons. So I think the fact that we can incorporate a lot of the uh, key systems into these dungeons that are built out is what's going to keep improving that PvE experience and make sure there's something for everybody to enjoy. You know, we've, we've touched on what makes Throne and Liberty unique, you know, at, at different points. Just to kind of go like even deeper and more focused on that, across all the online dungeon crawlers, what do you really think makes Throne and Liberty stand out? I'm going to give you a couple, and I'm going to let Murr probably give a couple here in a second. But uh, for me, there's two major things. One is it's been built in mind the whole time for this massive scale combat. Um, the tech from the beginning already had that in mind. This is an evolution of NC's previous titles where they did a lot of massive scale work, and they've really taken it even to another level here. Um, I think I mentioned before, but we have castle sieges that have thousands of players within them, and that's the type of massive scale combat that you can expect uh, in Throne and Liberty. So that's number one. Uh, number two for me is probably the really deep social system that's in the game. Uh, I think a lot of MMO lovers are going to enjoy this kind of deep guild system that there is in the game. And of course there is some activities that you can still do solo and enjoy the game uh, solo if you prefer. Uh, but I think the experience is only going to be enhanced if you're playing with friends. Uh, shared rewards in the guild system, lots of content that you accomplish together with your guild. And I think it's those group level accomplishments that feel extra special in MMOs. I would add that um, I personally take a lot of pride in the visual quality of Throne and Liberty. Um, the world, the animations, the visual effects, there's a lot of components there that add depth and immersion. The world is seamless and open so you can travel end to end exploring all of it without a load screen. Um, and then I would also say um, it's more of like a methodology approach. It's not necessarily like a game specific um, USP. But the methodology behind how we develop Throne and Liberty, Liberty is iterative in that we run many rounds of testing, collect fa uh, player feedback, and align that to the data that's being produced during those tests and improve the game based on player feedback and the direction that is suggested but also qualified by our design conviction. And so it's more of an operating approach on how the game is improved over time. And as a live service game that will continue on for many years, it's very important that we prioritize the right content that addresses the problems of the day, and we have a development cycle that is supportive of that. Any live service game feels like a living document, right? Like it's always kind of like you're constantly amending, not just quality of life changes, but new gameplay elements to, to keep bringing you know, players back for more. How is it kind of like incorporating that as you go? Like you said, you have the advantage of seeing it out in Korea for several months, but now that it's about to hit this huge global audience, how is it kind of you know, doubling down on that moving forward? Yeah, I think it's um, uh, first starts with managing expectations around when content will be released. So standard intervals of content releases, and then also addressing whatever the concerns are of the day is another component. We'll see people adapt to some systems and like them more than others, and maybe that's a signal for us to lean into that type of gameplay. But also we have to check our natural instinct and uh, NC's design conviction around a feature. Um, as designers, I know NC has a lot of great ideas and wants to bring them um, to life. But also we need to make sure that it's solving a problem, that the players enjoy it. And so um, that appetite for player feedback and to um, include that in the cycle is really a key. And it, it's one thing to create great content and launch it into the wild. It's another thing to do that by having it vetted with live player experiences to get it to the point of good. And again, you can play Throne of Liberty on PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series XS. Open beta test from July 18th to July 23rd. The full global launch, September 17th. Gentlemen, thanks for taking the time today. Thank you. Prepare for battle and claim the throne.